doing it on a defensive end and an offensive end. On offensive end, great penetration with 11 first half assists. And they've been doing it by getting in those gaps. That's the one thing that Florida State did not do against Auburn. They just settled for moving the ball around the perimeter, taking shots. So far, Kentucky's done a great job penetrating those gaps. And every time they've caught the ball on the perimeter, they've been ready with their hands to shoot the basketball. Our first half stats and just 27% from the floor for Auburn. The going process for Auburn, finding somebody that can be consistent from the scoring block. And Ernest Ross was that the last five games, but so far, just giving them absolutely no productivity. Ross 0 for 3 from the floor. There's a three ball. Well, Brandon Knight already with 11 points. And he's a guy, like John Calipari said, is his best point guard shooter he's ever had. And you think about the likes of the Derrick Rose, the John Wall. This young man shooting over 40% from the three-point line really space out the defense. Miller from three. In and out. Ross held scoreless. Auburn's leading rebounder and score. Gets it down to Chubb. Chubb kick out. Wallace had it. Goes to Payne. Payne gets his man in the air, then blocked by Lamb. And that's not the offense you want if you're Auburn. You don't want things to break down into a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Stay with your true basketball offensive system. Dribble drive, dribble handoff, continue to play your same game. You're not gonna win this game one against five. Lamb lays it in. Biggest lead of the game for the Wildcats at 25. Lamb with eight. Already, Kentucky has two players in double figures. Jones with 13, Knight with 11. Here's Ross, tripped up. Lamb right here, really working. He pushes his man down and then is able to get a full head of steam in transition. If you're Chubbs, you got him. As Coach Cal watches. Coach Cal in pursuit of a 27th consecutive win here at Rupp Arena. Smooth look at the stroke from Gabriel. He pulls up and dropped that one. And Gabriel with six. The crowd has never really gotten into it tonight here at Rupp Arena, primarily because Kentucky got off such a great start. I was going to say, was there really a need for them to get into it? They're pacing themselves. They have LSU in town Saturday. A game you can see live on ESPN3.com. There's a turnover, and Ross may get his first points here. No, he won't. Williams, Lamb. Rejected by the underside of the backboard. Up tempo. Here comes Wallace. Lays it off. Lamb picks it off. Jones sends it down. Well, if you're Ernest Ross in that last possession, you're 6'5", 210. Brandon Knight is chasing. Yes, Brandon Knight is 6'1". Don't worry about where he is defensively. Just go up and dunk the basketball. Go to the rim strong. It's an Auburn team, Jay, that seems like they're just in in search of an offense, some well, kind of rhythm, something. And they're in search of a leader. And that's something that Frankie Sullivan brought to the table. A guy who's a junior, he's been around the block. He understands what it takes to win time ba big time basketball games, but he brings that leadership component, most importantly, to be that sixth man, if you will. As Kentucky has been in control from the opening tip. Biggest lead was at 25. It is now a 21 point lead for Coach Cal and company to go and they go to the line for three. DeMarcus Cousins left Lexington after one season and Terrence Jones has been kind of the guy who they said, well, you need to fill up those numbers. And he's doing a great job of it so far. Not the same type of player, but numbers wise, you're getting the same kind of results. Well put together and a lot more of a competitor. As last season's Kentucky campaign continued, 
I know who's going to leave early. Jones probably has the best shot if he wants to go. Knight, you know, will he go? And if he comes back, will he even be the point guard next year? He's more of a scorer. The thing is, too, I think Knight and players like Lamb could be even more effective in the NBA. You don't have, you know, three guys, four guys coming into tonight. Just one thus far. Jones, the putback and one. You saw the great double down for Lamb. He came off with solid penetration. Kicked it over to Darius Miller. Darius Miller missed the three, but guys like Terrence Jones and Josh Harrelson, while you're watching the ball in the air, they're operating and carving out space for the offense to rebound. And that's the kind of energy that you need from Terrence Jones to remain aggressive after those loose ball opportunities. Harrelson with his second rebound. Miller takes it, goes last. When he goes to the NBA, which will probably be this spring, he's a first-round lock. He may even be a top three pick. 6'11", from Istanbul, Istanbul, Turkey, and I love this about him. Wants to be a professional wrestler after his basketball career is done. As a guard, I don't want to go anywhere near him in the paint if he wants to be a professional wrestler. Jones, the strip. Jones, the lay-in. The Euro step through. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a new dance fan. I like that. <laughs> Down low to Jones. Picked off. Ross. Still without a bucket. Hoghouse is. Most definitely. Well, if you call 24 points and 10 rebounds versus Georgia in the doghouse, I mean, Kentucky obviously lost the game, but Terrence Jones, a young man that could put up a lot of points, 27 points, 17 rebounds versus Notre Dame, 29 points against Oklahoma. The young man is just a pure talent. And now back-to-back 24-point -back outings for Jones, and his night is not done. He is three rebounds shy of his seventh career double-double. Langford under the hole, can't get it to go. Rebound for Harrelson. Knight drops it back. Harrelson from three, big man. Now Harrelson, you talk about the underrated play. You go back to last season, average 1.3 points. 1.2 rebounds per game. He's now up to 6.9 points and nine and a half points. Or what you have to love about him is every time there's a shot that goes up, regardless of whether it goes in or not, he's carving out position on that block to try to get that rebound. It's continuous effort that he gives you on a low post. Harrelson now with six points. Kentucky shooting 51% from the field and 45% from three-point land. And defensively, they are holding Ernest Ross, Auburn's leading scorer, to a goose egg. Well, he has Saran Wrap, DeAndre Wiggins on. Now, nice bounce pass, Naismith with the easy bucket. First points of the evening for Naismith. Lead at 22 for number 15, Kentucky. Jones, of course, that one, Harrelson with the rebound. Problems with Kentucky's their lack of bench. I bet there's a lot of folks back home watching this game saying, hey, you know what? This one's probably in control, coach. Why don't you get some of these guys some minutes? And it is not just a Kentucky complaint. You see this across the board with a lot of the national programs. You see a team in control. You want to see some of the bench guys get minutes, but you rarely do. Why? Well, I think Kentucky's still at a point where they're trying to figure out who they are. You know, this is a team that the complex complexity of the team has changed a lot. There have been some games where Terrence Jones hasn't been the leading scorer. Ron Lamb stepped up and been that guy. Brandon Knight stepped up and been that guy. So, especially considering you have so many freshmen in pivotal roles, the more playing time they get, the more comfortable they will be with NCAA tournament time and SEC tournament time. That's a good point with so many freshmen. You need to get them the playing time, even in a blowout. Mason looks a little winded as he's working the point right now for Auburn. Gives up his dribble, gets it to Chubb. And I can't say it enough, Auburn is a different team with Frankie Sullivan in the lineup. 
He's a guard with experience. He can control the flow of the game. He does not mind to get in your face and demand excellence out of you. And that's the one thing that Auburn's missing right now. Lamb and Darius Miller and then having a point guard and Brandon Knight that's shooting over 43% from the three-point line as well. Uh, they're a very dangerous team, especially when they're in attack mode. Gabriel responds with a three ball of his own. Jones for Kentucky at 27. His career high is 29 that he scored earlier this season versus Oklahoma. Coach Cal's body language on the bench right now, not pretty. They get a bucket, but he is has been through a lot. But they're finally starting to mend it all together. Mississippi State, eight to seven overall, 0 and one in conference play. I want to remind you when we're done here, ACC action, NC State at Boston College. Jones, say hello to a career high. He now has 32 points, all of them off the bench. I think that's a sign of things to come? Maybe a little. I doubt Terrence Jones will come off the bench anymore this year. <laughs> <laughs> Jones with quick hands in the steal. Harrelson was looking to go up tempo. There's Liggins to Jones. The hook, he'll go to the line. And that's where Kentucky's so dangerous. In 2010, the first player in Auburn history to wear number zero. Not double zero, but a single zero. Alley. Semi oop Harrelson, another bucket near the hook, near the rim. You know, what's really amazing is that when you look at Harrelson, he doesn't have the biggest vertical in the world, but yet he finds a way to get so many rebounds and so many putback opportunities. Does a really solid job of just being low to the ground and really using those thighs and those strong legs to carve out space on the block. Big slam down low, Adrian Forms, the native of Jamaica. Junior college product has found his way to Auburn. Nice bounce pass. Poole got a little ahead of himself. Stacy Poole seeing some minutes. Didn't play last Saturday in Georgia. Miles Terrence Jones, a career high and a UK freshman single game high, 35 points. Again, Jones did not get the start tonight, so 35 points off the bench. Miller, nice floater in the paint. Miller in double digits now with 10, the third Wildcat to reach double digits. He does it in his 24th consecutive start. Two are very underrated players. One of those guys who does so much for this program. Payne rejected by Jones. Jones double teamed and then stripped by the little man. Wallace to Ross. Back to Wallace, out of bounds. Stay with the Tigers. So the kind of response you want to see from Kentucky. You don't necessarily expect them to shoot lights out every single time, but they did provide a lot more effort and energy than they did against UGA. And also, they were a lot more physical in this game. As you saw, every time Auburn drive to the basket, they were the team being checked, and it wasn't Kentucky. I remembered it vividly last night. Congrats to the Auburn football team. Congrats to the University of Kentucky basketball program as they get win number 13 on the season, improved to 13 and three overall, one and one in conference play with the 78-54 victory overall.